Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Sales on Demand show. I'm Adam, and this is episode 121. Today, story time. That's right. No um, specific, you know, practical business advice from me today. It's just going to be me regaling you with the tale of my awesome trip to the United States, from which I have returned safely and with no real, you know, no flight delays or anything like that. I was very, very pleased with the way the whole thing went. Uh, it was an adventure. Man, it was it was amazing. So I would love to tell you some stories about this. And, uh, you know, I think it's just making me think about how I want to live my life, basically. So I guess there is a broader picture here that might help you as an entrepreneur. But I thought it would be fun to compare uh, the differences between the United States and Canada and also tell you the story of my visit to the Tom Woods 2000th episode event, which was utterly amazing, like beyond expectations for sure. So for starters, some of you may not know who Tom Woods is, but Tom is the person who really kind of got me in this path in the beginning. He very literally is the person who introduced me to print on demand, although at the time he didn't know me specifically. Um, he was just promoting some some products on his you know his podcast. So he actually had Rachel Raffay on the show and she was talking about, you know, what she does, you know, the the whole coffee mug printing thing and it sounded intriguing. This was in two thousand seventeen. And I was, uh, you know, I was definitely looking for something other than working a job for the rest of my life. And I was like, okay, well, this sounds kind of cool. You know, I'll buy the program and see how it works. And, uh, you know, I've told this story before, so the rest is kind of history. But that, that was the beginning of my journey as an entrepreneur. But it certainly wasn't the end of it. And of course, Tom Woods, you know, I started listening to his show back in probably 2010. I mean, it's been a long time. Um, I, I distinctly remember listening to the, the Tom Wood show while I was fixing something underneath my house uh, when we lived on a farm. So I was crawling underneath the house and I had some earbuds in and I was listening to the Tom Wood show and it was like episode 127 or something like that. I mean, I'd have to go back and look. But it was uh, it was definitely way way back, and uh, Tom Woods, for those of you who don't know, is a libertarian and uh, a, a historian. So he would often give lectures about you know historical events and basically tell you the story of how our freedom was taken away from us and how it could have been avoided. I mean, it's kind of sucks to hear how the Federal Reserve was started and how all of these social programs were put in place and, and all that stuff. Because, you know, obviously there's nothing we can do about it. It's kind of, you know, a done deal. It's not like we can reverse it um, right off the bat here. But it, it is good to know that policies like that are contributing to the problem, right? So when you when you take freedom away from people... When you interfere with the marketplace, when you remove choices, then people suffer. And they suffer in, in you know, results commensurate to how much freedom you take away from them. So, for example, in China, people have a little bit more freedom than they did in the 1960s. So their lives are getting better. On the other hand, here in North America, we've been, you know, we've had our freedom slowly eroded since the 60s, 60s, and our lives are just getting kind of worse and worse, culminating in 2021, where my mother actually just texted me, and she said, hey, listen, we should get out of here and go down to Montana. What do you think? And I was like, hmm, what about Idaho? <laughs> so uh, it's pretty obvious that a lot of people are unhappy with the the situation in their in their living arrangements, and they want to make a change. Now, I don't know about that right now, um, because 
I think that some of this is temporary, and I don't know that the United States is necessarily going to do much better than Canada when it comes to freedom. The U.S. dollar is sitting on a precipice. Um, uh, it's literally a house of cards, and uh, I just, you know, there's there's not really going to be a so-called safe haven. You really just have to kind of create that safe haven where you are. You know, moving is, is fine, but you can't just just get up and move. It, it's not something that you can do really quickly. But anyway, um, I, I might talk about that in some future episodes, you know, how to escape the city if you're living in a city. I think that's kind of be kind of important. Living in the city is, it's going to be awful. And, you know, it's just not worth it. So, let me get into the meat and potatoes of this episode. The story of my last week. So, I recorded an episode on the road and I haven't actually posted it yet because I've been ridiculously busy, but I'm going to post both of these episodes at the same time. One of them is going to be part one, the other one's going to be part two. Just make it a two-parter. So, the the last time you, you heard from me, I was sitting in a hotel in Las Vegas, um, having missed my flight, not not missed it, but not been able to get on the flight because I didn't have the correct COVID test. So I was supposed to get a PCR test or some other kind of test, but not an antigen test. An antigen, antigen test is apparently not good enough. I, I don't know why, but it, it isn't good enough. So the Canadian government wants this super expensive and hard to get test before they let you back on a plane to get, to get, to get into Canada. So I didn't have that. And so they said, well, we'll rebook you for tomorrow. And I was like, oh. and then I still have, you know, fly back into Canada. Um, and then I, then I still am planning to fly down to Florida the following weekend. So I thought about this for a good hour or two hours. And I was like, do I really want to, to fly back into Canada, get home, and then just do the same thing over again? You know, like, get on the plane again, fly to Toronto, fly to Orlando, and then, you know, just spend a couple of hours, be really tired. Or, I could just fly to Orlando now and stay in a hotel, you know, get a rental car and just kind of have a little adventure. So that ended up being what I did. And I think it was more, um, there was two reasons that I did that. Number one... I just did not want to go through the hassle of clearing customs twice and, you know, paying for this stupid test twice. And I had a lot of work to do. Like, this this last week was just absolutely crazy. I had so much work to get done. I had a lot of FBA products to ship off for, for students. Um, I, so I was literally just working basically morning till night in Orlando. But I also wanted to have an adventure, right? I wanted to do something a little bit kind of crazy. And so flying to Florida from Las Vegas just seemed like it just seemed like a, an adventurous and kind of wild thing to do, but also practical thing to do. And I thought, well, you know, I can kind of just survive and um, spend some time in Florida, get to know the local color. <laughs> so um, and just this is this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. You don't often get a chance like this, and when when you do, you kind of just have to take it. And so, being a, an adventurous soul myself, wanting to do some traveling, like, life sometimes is about experiences. And if you see an experience in front of you and you don't take it, you might regret that. So I didn't want to look back at this and say, well, you know, I, I regret not having done this. And um, so I did. Jumped on a plane, Spirit Airlines, flew to North Carolina, and then then I uh, took another flight from North Carolina, Charlotte, North Carolina, 4 a.m., and landed in Orlando first thing in the morning. It was already, I think, 9 o'clock in the morning by the time I landed in Orlando. And Spirit Airlines is everything they say it is, but they got me there. You know, it was not a comfortable flight. I, you know, there was no plugins or anything. There was no screens. There was no in-flight 
movie or anything like that. It was just like, here's a seat, buckle up, this is going to be a, you know, I think the first leg was like three and a half hours, then we had a two hour layover in Charlotte, and then it was another two hours from Charlotte to Orlando. Uh, so I had hoped that I might be able to sleep, because this was a red eye, um, and I was disappointed. I, I wasn't able to sleep. Not very much, anyway. It's just really uncomfortable to try and sleep, and, you know, <sighs> sleeping on a on an airplane is hard enough, but when the, the seat doesn't tilt back, it's just like, well, okay. <laughs> but, you know, despite that, I wasn't really super exhausted when I got to Orlando, because I guess I'm just acclimated to staying up all night from my years working night shift, so I know what I'm capable of, and I know how to kind of push through that. And I did, you know, kind of doze off a few times, probably slept like an hour and a half cumulatively over the, the night. And so I landed in Orlando and I got off the plane and I could feel the heat through the jetway, the jet bridge. Like you can feel the humidity and I was just like, wow, this is Florida. Now, Nevada is pretty warm too, but it was more temperate um, and it, because it's a desert, there's really no humidity. It's really dry. And what's funny is, you know, I think I commented on this in the last episode, but I didn't see a single blade of grass in Nevada. The whole place was just kind of like grimy, um, dry, and just kind of barren, right? So there's there's empty lots all over the place, and there's, you know, there's no grass or vegetation in the, in the lots. Maybe a couple like weeds poking through the ground, but it's just like barren ground. But in Florida, everything is lush and green. Like, you just look around you and there's like, you know, beside the road, there's just rows upon rows of trees and bushes and shrubs and grass. And it just, the whole thing just seems alive and verdant. It just reminds you of a tropical rainforest. Maybe a deciduous tropical rainforest, but it still was very, very, like, lush and just humid. You just feel the humidity as soon as you step off the airplane. And honestly, I loved it. I just loved it. I was like, give me more. So every day I would try to get outside and just take my shirt off and just walk around and just bask in that beautiful sun. And, uh, you know, there was cloud cover sometimes. And even when the clouds were covering the sun, it just was nice outside. Like it was never unseasonably cold or anything like that. So... Got off the plane. I did manage to get a rental car. It was not cheap, but I just, I wanted to have access to wheels. You know, um, when I was in Vegas, I I just had to cab it everywhere. And it was a huge pain to try and drive around a cab everywhere you go. It was just enormously annoying. And it was expensive too. So because my hotel was a long way from the airport, I figured having a rental car was probably going to be the easiest way to get around. And it turns out I was 100% correct about that. So, um, yeah, it was kind of fun driving around Orlando. I don't know that I really got to know the area because I was basically stuck in the hotel room most of the day doing work. Uh, but it was nice to just have a car to go out and get some food or something like that because, you know, there wasn't really anything good within walking distance. Although there was a 7-Eleven uh, uh, maybe 200 meters away from the hotel. And I'll tell you, those guys, they probably got, you know, $80 of my money and saw me probably like 10 times. Um, it, it was a nightly ritual for me to walk over to that 7-Eleven and just get me some chicken wings and uh, a chicken salad sandwich, which you might think that a chicken salad sandwich at a gas station is going to be kind of gross. It wasn't. It was amazing. I mean, delicious, fresh, tasty. Anyway, yeah. So that's basically what I did. I, I booked into my hotel, you know, six days early and just spent, you know, four and a half days just, just basically in front of the computer, just day and night working, trying to get all these, these things done. I would get up at seven in the morning and I'd go to bed at midnight. 
Um, I did try to take some breaks, get outside, you know, get some sun, go to the pool, get some food. But, you know, I was I was working very hard and I just barely got it done. So you can see, like, even with having very, very few distractions, like no distractions whatsoever, you know, that's the beauty of being in a hotel room by yourself is that you basically have no distractions. So I was able to work very hard. Uh, but it still was pretty tight, you know, getting all the work done. And like I said, you know, um, just barely got it done. But everything on Friday night had been finished. So I was, com you know, it was all complete. The deadline had passed and I'd gotten the work done. So Saturday was the day that I was going to see Tom Woods and his 2000th episode. So... You know, I, I drove to the, I don't even know where it was, it was some huge hotel um, in Orlando proper. I wasn't actually in Orlando with this other hotel. It was another little town called Kissimmee. Hopefully that's how it's pronounced. I don't know. But um, this hotel was just astonishing. It was like a palace. I walked in and I was like, what is this? Looks like, a, you know, a Russian palace from the, the Cold War era. You know, huge ceilings, arch ceilings, like big, huge conference rooms. And you had to walk half a mile to get to anything. But they had, you know, you know, seven or eight restaurants in the hotel. And there was people everywhere milling around. And at first, I couldn't see anybody that I knew. Even though there was going to be a lot of people that I kind of knew from online at this thing. I was like, where is everybody? Because it was such a huge building. You just, you just really can't find anybody. And so I, I did find a few people who were attending this event and chatted with one guy, or several several guys, and then it started to get, the conversation started to get weird, so I kind of ducked out. I mean, he this guy spent probably 20 minutes explaining how to cook an egg, and I'm like, well, this is this is fun, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go this way. Nice to meet you. Um, have a good one. So um, I did eventually run into a whole bunch of people that I only have ever met on Twitter and, and online. And, um, you know, I ran into some people who are, I don't know if you'd call them famous. They're, they're famous in the libertarian world, the anarchy world. But outside of that, they're not, nobody really knows who they are. But you know what? That's, who cares, right? These are people who are important to me and I was happy to meet them. So I got to eat lunch with a few people who, you know, have podcasts and are are doing big things in, in, in this world. And uh, that was cool. That was awesome. Got to just sort of spend time with good people who also are adamant about freedom. So when we got into the actual show itself, it actually took a while to get there because uh, I, I arrived at this location at about one in the afternoon and it didn't start till eight so I had a lot of time to kill so I just basically wandered around I even had a nap in the, the rental car because I just felt so tired I'm like okay I need to have a nap or I'm gonna like collapse here but um all in all I I did run into a listener from the show she had uh, she had emailed me beforehand she said hey we should like hang out a little bit I don't know anybody here you know, um, it would be cool to have somebody that I know to just, like, sit around and chat with. So I did. I sat around and chatted with her, and it was awesome. She's from Georgia, which is a state that I've never really been to, but now I think I might have to visit Georgia. It sounds like a really awesome place. Same with, you know, Tennessee and Arkansas, Alabama, all those southern states. They all sound really awesome, and I think uh, it would be pretty cool to come down there and visit. But that's probably going to you know, be a, a something for down the road. So it it got around to 7 o'clock, and we all started filling into this huge auditorium. Now, Tom Woods, he was pretty busy, so I only got to chat with him a little bit. As some of you guys might know, I was a guest on his show back in earlier this year, talking about the mandates in Canada and everything that was happening here and still kind of is happening. And uh, that was awesome. So he he knows me by name. I I know his mom. I know you know his 
his fiance. So it was kind of neat to just sort of, I don't know if I'd say that I'm in sort of the inner circle, but you know, to have somebody who is really respectable and really well known to know who you are, it feels good. Okay. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Like having somebody that you admire come up to you and say, Hey, glad you're here. You know, welcome. And, you know, shake your hand. That feels good. I really enjoyed that. And then, um, got to chat with his mom for about 20 minutes. Overall, my only complaint is that it just wasn't enough time. So we only had the day and then I had to leave the next day. But, um, if you guys don't listen to Tom Woods, well, I, I don't know what you're missing or you don't know what you're missing. I mean, I know what you're missing, but you don't. Um, if you believe in freedom and you, you were angry about all of this COVID crap over the last year, even if you, you know, believe that people should be cautious and get vaccinated, you still recognize that there's something going on behind the scenes here that isn't right. So as I've said before, I went out and I got vaccinated because it seemed like a good idea, right? I, I was like, okay, COVID is real. And I understand that even though I'm not in the sort of high risk category, I still don't want to be knocked on my, my butt for like three, four weeks getting COVID. So I went out and got vaccinated because it looked like the vaccine was very effective. Now it turns out it's not nearly as effective as we thought, which is disappointing, but not surprising. Um, although, you know, if you get a breakthrough infection, that basically ends up being much less uh, awful than if you just get a, you know, a novel infection with no immunity whatsoever. So at this point in time, I'm just waiting to get that breakthrough infection. And I'm fully expecting, honestly, I'm, I'm surprised I didn't get it while I was there in Florida. You know, um, I was I was like, come on, somebody give me COVID here. I need the, I need the full immunity. Um, I know it's not going to kill me. And I just want to get it over with, right? So I'm not, I'm serious. Like getting COVID right now would be the best possible situation for me because it would basically give me like strong, hopefully lifetime immunity at a point in my life where I'm healthy enough to fight off the infection with almost no long-term side effects, right? Think about that. Think about the fact that someday you're going to get COVID, right? COVID's not going away. So you're going to get it. Do you want to get it now when you're probably hopefully healthy and maybe you've just been vaccinated? So if you get it, it's just basically going to be like, you know, you, you feel kind of crappy for three or four days and then you get up and you are you get better over a few weeks. Or do you want to get it when you're 80 and then you'll be like Colin Powell and you'll be in the hospital for a long time and possibly die of it? So... If you're going to get it eventually, my opinion is that, for me at least, I just would rather get it now and then get it over with. You know, it's like a band-aid. Just rip it off, man. Just rip it off. So, a little disappointed that I seem to be perfectly healthy, um, even though I was wearing a definitely not approved by the FDA or CDC face mask, <laughs> which I which I purchased online. And I'll, I'm going to throw a link in the show notes and where you guys can get your own definitely not approved by the CDC or FDA mask, um, which doesn't really uh, um, block a lot of uh, your breath. Let's just put it that way. But it looks very real from a distance. So I wore this mask on the planes. I, I've worn it everywhere. It's my only face mask at this point. Um, anyway, this... Um, this whole trip has been amazing. And on Sunday morning, when I finally stepped on the plane to, to get back to Canada, I was like, I actually feel like a sense of loss here. It would have been great to have my family down there for sure. Um, and I do plan on bringing them back down to, uh, to visit Disney World, which is sounds amazing. Um, and of course, the, the Disney World version sounds better than the Disneyland version in California because Florida has clearly not lost its collective mind, mostly. So that that's definitely something we're going to do in the future. And I'm still thinking about, you know, maybe 
moving to the United States. And I and I would rather move somewhere warmer than just, I mean, my, my parents are like, oh, we should go to Montana. I'm like, well, it's still kind of cold there, right? I didn't. Re- I don't want to just trade, you know, governments. I, I want to go somewhere that, you know, the weather is beautiful. And it, it seems to me that the southern states have kind of got that going on. So being able to have a pool in your backyard seems pretty awesome. Being able to just go outside with a t-shirt and shorts on in the middle of October also seems pretty awesome. It's not that I hate the cold. It's that I love the heat. You know, I don't want to die of the heat, but they have air conditioning down there. So, you know, if you if you don't want to go outside, you don't have to. But here in Canada, most people don't have air conditioning. So when it's hot here, you actually suffer from that. I don't know how many times I've been sitting in my office here and just been sweating, like just unbearably hot, which I don't mind. But if if it's all day long, it's really uncomfortable. So that's uh, that's a lot of stuff that I'm gonna have to sort of mentally work through. But I wanted to, as as my very last thing, I wanted to leave you guys with some funny comparisons between the United States and Canada. Some just some things that I observed here that I, I just thought were funny. So first of all, what they say about Florida, Florida man you know, where there's kind of crazy people down there, is is accurate. So, um, Florida's great. It's amazing. It's beautiful. It's, it's everything that I could have expected and more. But there are some lunatics down there, and I observed a few of them. Some of them were driving. Some of them were not driving. But um, it was entertaining. The drivers down there are definitely a little bit crazy. Um... You know, the, the speed limit said 70 on the, on the interstate, and I was like, okay, I'm going 70. And there wasn't a single car that was driving the same speed as me. They were all driving faster. And I'm like, well, I don't necessarily want to go faster than 70 miles an hour, but it looks like keeping up with the flow of traffic would be safer. And then there's the toll roads. So Florida, and specifically Orlando, has some toll roads. And that was new because we don't really have that here in Alberta. I know they have it on Ontario, which, you know, Ontario sucks. So sorry about that, guys. It just does. But yeah, I had to blow through the uh, toll toll booth and, and throw change in the thing. And it was kind of just an interesting experience. Um, the roads look a little different. You can tell that it doesn't snow at all down there because here in Canada, um, we have Roads built for snow plows, right? Every single road has to be plowable, meaning that you can't have things sticking out of the road. (laughs) So down in Florida, they've got like little reflector strips just sticking out of the road so you can see at night, which is nice. It's awesome. Um, I just wish that, you know, we had something like that here so we could actually see at night. Um, Here in Canada, if you're driving in the winter, you don't know where the lane is. It's just basically you're guessing at... Hey, where's the lane? Okay, it looks like there's some tire tracks here. I'm going to drive in those tire tracks. They could be the lane. It might not be. It's kind of a mystery. So that's kind of cool that they are able to do that down in Florida. And, of course, it's because they don't get any real snow down there, if any snow at all. I'd be amazed if there's places down there. Or, sir, I should say I wouldn't be surprised if there are places in Florida that have never seen snow. Um... The money, of course, different. Um, you guys still have pennies down in the U.S., which, why Why do you have pennies? Get rid of those pennies. They're, they're worthless. Um, and, of course, um, you don't have the chip and pin thing. That was weird. It was a little, there was a fair bit of trash down there. So that was kind of annoying to see, you know. Uh, Las Vegas was pretty trashy, but then there were spots in, in Florida that just had a lot of trash lying around, too, so be kind of cool if you guys just, you know, take a little bit of personal accountability and clean things up. So I was doing that if I saw something that wasn't a face mask, because no way am I touching a face mask. That's just disgusting. So bottles and stuff, I'd pick it up and throw it in a trash can if there was one nearby. Of course, I throw my stuff in the trash can, which is interesting that the I was throwing everything in the trash can because I, I guess in Florida, you don't really recycle anything, so... Like, even the bottles didn't have a deposit, so you can't take your bottles back and get, you know, 10 cents or 5 cents for them. Here here in Canada, you won't find bottles. 
in the ditches or anything like that. People recycle those things. So I don't know if that's better or worse. It just is a difference. And uh, I can't really think of any other differences. There's a lot of just, you know, cultural differences. But um, the people down there are pretty awesome. And I enjoyed my trip. And, um, well, that's it for this episode, guys. i got to let you go. But uh, join me next time. We'll be talking about some uh, stuff with inflation and what you guys should be looking out for in the next 12 months and how to get ready for Christmas. So uh, take care. And we'll see you next time. Cheers.